Hi everyone, I'm Caleb with C4 Fabrication. Welcome to our three-part video series on how to install our oversized tire fitment kit. This kit is going to contain three components that will allow you to fit up to a 35-inch tire on the front of your third-gen Tacoma without any rubbing issues. In our first video, we're going to show you how to use our cutting template to trim the front fender and flares. In the second video, we're going to show you how to install our high clearance aluminum fender liner. Lastly, in the third video, we'll show you how to remove the OE body mount from the frame of the truck and replace it with the C4 body mount. I'm going to start by showing you guys the components of the kit and then we'll get started with our install. Our first component is the guides that will be used to cut our front fender and flares. The second component of our kit is our high clearance aluminum fender liner. This comes in two pieces. This is our main piece and the front piece. It will also come with all the attachment brackets, hardware kit, and rubber edge trim to go along the edge of the fender liner. The third component of our kit is going to be the replacement body mount. This will come with a metal bracket that welds to the frame, reinforcement plates, and a replacement rubber mount with hardware. Let's go ahead and get started with our first component of the kit. So the first thing we're going to start with is applying our cutting templates to the fender flare. So the first thing I want to do is make sure the fender flare is nice and clean so that vinyl template sticks to the flare. I'm going to go ahead and clean it real quick before I get started with that. So once your fender flare is nice and dry, we're going to start with applying the vinyl template. You can see that they're labeled. These templates have a P and a D on them for passenger and driver's side. So we're already on the driver's side here and we want to start with the first piece that you'll start lining up from the bottom of the flare is going to be this one that gets really wide at the top. So we're going to peel this piece off and apply it first. So we're going to start with the letter D at the top of the vinyl that's going to go up towards the top of your fender. The small skinny end down here is going to line up right to the very back edge of the flare. And that's where you will start to apply. So you want to line up the back edge here and this edge here along the fender. Get it lined up right there and just follow your way around up the flare as you go. Continuing to keep this template lined up with the edge of the plastic flare all the way. Now the fender flare does kind of have some texture to it, so this vinyl doesn't stick permanently, so you can peel it back and realign it. Uh, so don't get too worried if it sticks down in a spot uh, that's not exactly where you want it the first time. So the most important thing here is having it aligned with this outside edge. If there's a couple wrinkles in there, it's not a real big deal because after we cut through this, you're going to be fine tuning and cleaning that up with your cutting device anyway. Our next piece that we're going to apply is going to be the second one that's labeled D for driver's side. This long skinny piece here is going to go up along the top of the fender. So now this one, important stuff to uh, pay attention to when applying this one is that this edge of the vinyl piece lines up right along the top edge of the last one that we applied. And then this outside edge here is going to follow along this little uh, break in the corner of the flare, how that's shaped right there, you're going to follow the top of your vinyl along that point.
All right, we have both of our templates applied. As you can see, they're not perfectly flat. That's not a real big deal because as I said earlier, you're going to be um, sanding all this area and cleaning it up later. But the main point is that this aligns real flush here and right here. So you'll have a consistent curve around the corner. And then the remaining portion you'll follow all along this top edge of the flare down to the front. So we have our cutting templates end right here in this area at the front because that is where uh, C4 fabrication bumpers cut. So if you have a replacement front bumper, ours is gonna come right to this point and this will line up perfectly with that and most other manufacturers as well. That's the typical place where they cut. Um, if you, your aftermarket bumper is different or if you're keeping your OE bumper for now, you will just have to kind of cut accordingly to fit with the bumper that you have or to create the amount of clearance that you need down below here for your tires. Next step, we need to remove the plastic fender liner. And in order to do that, we have to remove all these screws are along the edge of the flare. Those are a 10 millimeter socket. And then there are some plastic clips in here that just have a square hole on them that are popped into the body that hold the plastic in place. I like to actually use a 3 8 drill bit and just drill into those plastic clips real quick because it makes it a lot easier to pull them out. Um, <clears throat> and then remove your screws, plastic clips, and then you'll be able to pull that entire plastic liner out from the fender well. Of course, working in there with drill bit, you're gonna wanna make sure you're wearing safety stuff. Safety glasses are always important when you're doing this kind of work. There are some more of those uh, plastic retainers behind the fender flare where these screws went in. So you'll have to drill those out too in order to get this liner to disconnect from that part. Now that we got that plastic liner out of the way, we also need to get this, this foam block out of here. Uh, so this piece just comes right out. We don't need that anymore. Um, I did also remove a little 10 millimeter bolt from the bottom of the fender here. So that's loose and it makes it easier to pull that foam piece out. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and cut through our fender flare and the fender behind it. So I like to use a four and a half inch angle grinder. That's what I'm comfortable with using. Uh, I just have a small cutoff wheel on there because making these corners and these curves with a smaller diameter cutoff wheel is a lot easier. Um, if you feel comfortable with an angle grinder, you can use that. Also, a lot of people like to use a, a small electric Dremel tool, uh, which can take a while, but they are smaller and easier to handle and maneuver through there. So um, you wanna just start cutting from the bottom. We're gonna be cutting on the inside edge of our template all along here. I work my way up from the bottom and around. Um, you'll wanna go all the way through the plastic flare and if you cut into the fender behind it, that's fine. Uh, nothing to worry about because we will be removing that material also. Um, so go ahead and get your flare completely cut and we'll remove that plastic piece and then cut the fender steel behind it afterwards. So I'm just about to get started cutting here and I put on a welding jacket, gloves, of course, safety glasses. Um, when you're cutting into this plastic, it's going to melt and it'll go flying everywhere. So just be aware of that before you start cutting. Now that the flare has been cut all the way through, you can go ahead and use the edge of the flare 
as a cutting template to go all the way through the steel fender behind the flare. So again, I'm going to start at the bottom of the fender, and since I removed that bolt, I'm going to kind of pull the fender out away from the body so that I'm not cutting into the pinch weld in the body behind the fender. All right, so now that I've cut through the steel fender behind the flare, I've gone through and uh, cleaned up some of the rough edges, <clears throat> just uh, peeled the plastic off that was melted on there. And then I went ahead and I just continued to cut right down here through the bumper to kind of blend in with what was trimmed here before. Again, that's kind of up to you and your own liking, whatever you have there. Um, this truck will be getting one of our bumpers installed on it, so everything will be cut off right here. Um, but that's just an example of how you can continue your cut right through into the OE bumper. Um, so next thing we need to do is clean up all these sharp and rough edges. Um, what I usually use is like a flap wheel like this on my grinder. Uh, makes it pretty easy to get in there and clean up everything without gouging into the steel or the plastic too deep and leaving a rough spot. Um, so you can go ahead and peel your templates off and then just kind of slowly work your way around cleaning up all all of the really sharp edges on the steel and the rough spots on the plastic. All right, so I finished going through and cleaning up all of the sharp edges on the fender and the flare. The main goal with that really is to just clean up everything so it's nice and even. You don't have any wavy spots in the plastic and that you have your steel all trimmed up higher than the flare in the back so you can't really see any areas hanging down that uh, wouldn't look good. And that sheet metal does get very sharp back there, so you wanna make sure all that stuff is cleaned up. Um, so no injuries occur in the future. After that's all done, you'll want to paint the edge of that steel. Um, you can use like a color matched paint pen or sometimes I'll even use a little piece of cardboard and spray paint onto it and you can kind of dab it onto the edge of the, the steel and it'll kind of run down the edge and coat it. It works pretty well. Um, so you can paint all of that and then you need to reattach your fender down at the bottom with that 10 millimeter bolt. And as far as the fender trimming portion goes, that part is now complete. So that completes the fender trimming portion of our video series. To see the rest of the series, click the link in the description below.